In this video, I want to help you identify problems that could cause your Samsung washing machine not to fill with water, which would cause the machine to fail to operate. It could throw out a 4C, 4E, or 4C2 error code as well. These ideas are going to work with generally any model washing machine, so please follow along with me. The very first thing that we want to do is inspect the water lines coming into the washing machine for just a few different things. First, let's turn the water lines all the way off and then take them off the washing machine. Make sure that both of the hoses work properly by turning them on and then discharging into a bucket. Make sure that the hot and cold lines are connected to the right valve inputs because if they are switched, it will not operate properly. They're both color coded, which is labeled H or red for hot and then C or blue for cold. Make sure they're matched properly. If you know that the valve hoses have been installed to the proper sides correctly, the next step would be to take a pair of needle nose pliers and remove the valve screens that are hidden on the inside of each of the valves. You should be able to see clearly through the valves and they would be free of debris. If not, these screens could be clogged, causing water not to flow through the valves properly, which could give you the error code. You can simply wash them off and make them right, but if you do find that they are damaged or are compromised with holes in the screens, you absolutely want to buy and replace them immediately. And I do have a link to brand new water valve screens in the description through Amazon. Another situation is if you have red or rusty discolored valves, you want to get the iron out of the lines and there's a great thing for it called iron out. We use this a lot to spray in the valves to clean them and you only want to use about one or two sprays. However, if the water is really bad and you've been using it for a long time, you may just have to simply replace the valves. Before we get into the washer Let's just top, do a final check on the hoses. Make sure they are not kinked or folded or damaged in any way to make sure that water would freely flow to the valves. With that being said, remove the top washer panel by removing the two screws on the left and right sides with a Phillips head screwdriver. First thing you wanna do is inspect the water valve wire harness. Make sure that the harnesses are seated in place properly. You could even disconnect them and reconnect them. We actually had to just go out this week on a warranty service call on one of our own washers we fixed because one of the wire harnesses got dislodged during transport, so always be careful that they are firmly seated in place. Assuming that they are, now take a multimeter and set your multimeter to ohms resistance. You can press the leads into each of the wire harnesses to get a reading, and the way your valves are oriented may be different than this. Each valve should get the same ohm resistance, and in this case we're getting right around 950. It could vary between 500 and 1500 ohms though, depending on your style of water valve. If you get a reading well outside of the 500 to 1500 ohm range, take the harness off and test the bare metal. If the number persists or you get an OL signal, it means that the valve is damaged and needs replaced. If you need the valves for this style washing machine, I will have a link in a product tag in the, the description so you can buy them. Otherwise, get the kind that will match based on your model number of your washing machine. Now, if none of these steps have actually solved your problem, the last thing you can do is do a live voltage test from your multimeter with the washing machine on. This is a little dangerous, so be very careful. When you turn the washing machine on, it should send a 120 volt signal going from the PCB to the water valves. You can use your multimeter leads the same way we did earlier to do the ohm test on the valves rather than the board, which is just here for an example. The pinout will be different on each of the boards depending on your style of washing machine, so just check the valve. You should get 120 volts going to it, but if you do not, the PCB is damaged and you need to replace it. Finally, here's the list of suggestions from Samsung's technician sheet for this style of WA45R6100 washing machine. The last thing on this list really to check that I can see is the pressure switch. Make sure it is set in place. There isn't any kinks or damage going to it, as well as a PCB terminal on the soap dispenser, but I don't actually see one here and I could just be not looking hard enough. Make sure that everything's secured once you've gone through all these main steps, and chances are one of these different steps has solved your problem. The key here is to make sure that water gets to the valve, and then the 120 volts of electricity get to the valve to open the solenoid up to put it into the washing machine. If one of these two things doesn't happen, there's a problem, and if you've gone through everything and you can't figure it out, chances are the PCB's bad, but that will be a very rare case. I hope this video helps you out and get your washing machine back in good working order.